Hello everyone and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Owen Harding, Community Manager at Enterprise Nation. For those of you joining an Enterprise Nation Lunch and Learn for the first time, we are a vibrant community of small businesses and business advisors that exists to shortcut your route to trusted business support. Today, I'm delighted to introduce Steve. He will share how to explain the problem your product addresses, how it provides a solution and the future and features, sorry, which enable this. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please post them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of today's session. Today's webinar will be recorded and we will send a follow-up email to you with the recording and further resources later on today. Steve, over to you. Brilliant. So, hope everybody can see my screen. Thank you very much, Owen, for uh, hosting me and Enterprise Nation for giving me the opportunity to do this. So, uh, I, my name is um, Steve Tonkiff Wilson. I've helped and build so many products. These days, I support entrepreneurs to raise investment and to grow their own businesses. These tips are based on hundreds of pictures I've seen from startups and from sales reps, as well as my own work. So this session is about pitching your product to a group of investors or customers. We're going to talk about how to explain the problem your product is addressing, how it provides a solution, and the features which enable this. I won't be covering presentation skills or one-to-one -one selling today. Our learning objective is to describe your product pitch in one sentence. This is an interactive session, so please scan the QR code with your phone or go to Menti and enter the number above. I'll appreciate your contributions during the session. I'll, I'll leave you a minute to uh, do the scan. Obviously, if you're watching on your phone, you need to try and type the number in instead. That's the, the challenge. Um, there will be the number will feature on, on the later slides as well. So don't worry if you haven't done it in time. So before we can pitch our product, we need to know who our customers are. C consumers and businesses choose their purchases very differently, although we are all human beings. This is a simplistic description of the motivations, uh, but hopefully that makes sense to you. So who are your customers? Please respond to the mentee and let's see how many of you are selling to customers, consumers, or other best businesses. The code isn't the top there if you need to um, Type it in. I'll just check the chat to see if this is all working fine. Ooh, here we go. Thank you very much for your contributions. That's fascinating. Right. So we've got quite a lot more B2B um, people with customers than people selling direct to consumers. That is interesting. Roughly twice as much um, selling to businesses and consumers. Thanks a lot for your input. Um, that's a good start. It also checks everything's working as well. So um, we'll move on now. So um, next. So when talking about our customers' problems, we need to think about how it makes them feel. The most important problems to solve are those which cause severe and persistent pain to our customers. Which of your customers' pains are not yet being addressed? And how can you use your customers' own language to help their understanding? I'll give you a minute. I'm not going to read through this, but uh, hopefully this makes sense to you. So we all have different reasons for buying things. We might be motivated by our feelings or just be looking for a better deal. Whether we are buying for a business or just ourselves, our motivations may be personally or commercially driven. Here are some possible pains to consider. Which of these are most relevant to your customers? I'll leave you to have a think about this. There are other lists as well, by the way. So if you're in the business of um, uh, providing promotion services to your customers. Um, there's a list of themes on those as well, but I couldn't fit them on the slide. So what are your customers' pains? This is a word cloud. This is going to be interesting. So please go to Menti and share which pains your customers are experiencing. 
if you can try and capture it in a word um, and just type it in, then it should appear here, hopefully. There should be some examples as well when you get to the Menti screen of um, words to type in. Oh, there we go. Price, frustration, delay. Those are some of the ones I suggested, but there's a lot more other possibilities as well. I'll just give that a minute. Oh, the fun thing about this is, is that it resizes depending on who agrees. So you can type in the same word as somebody else and it just gets bigger. Funding, hmm? lack of direction. That's interesting. Time poor. Price, price is a big one. That's getting bigger, isn't it? Unskilled labor force. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your contributions. This, this is really interesting, actually. Frustration. A few ticks there. I'll just give it a little bit longer. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. So price is coming out quite high, isn't it? But there's a lot of other reasons as well. There's lots of other pains. I'm going to move on now. So what is your solution? Let's talk about how your product will improve things for your customer. We should stay focused on their emotions and talk about your product's benefits instead of its features. What makes your product valuable and essential? How does it deliver better outcomes for your customers? Have to think about that. So here are some example benefits to get you started. Every product or service has different benefits for its customers. So what are yours? These are some themes, again, based on consumers and businesses and uh, or personal and commercial, we should say. So what are your solutions benefits? See if you can uh, go to the mentee and, and share which benefits your solution brings to your customers. the agonizing pause while Menti does its work. Oh, here we go, efficiency. Going the extra mile, hmm. So that's a level of service, isn't it? It's like a quality of service is to go the extra mile for your customers. Personalization, that is a strong one. Quality of service, another service theme. Expertise, that's also a service theme. Efficiency, so that's more about is that about how much you produce and how quickly you do it? Or is it about to the cost efficiency? Energy efficiency, experience, that's like the UX sort of side of, of your product. Clarity, that's a good one actually. Personalization again. Confidence in direction. Ooh, that sounds like a consultancy benefit. I wonder, efficiency is getting bigger. Here we go. Comfort. It's nice, yes, reassurance. It's another nice benefit. We've got 14 responses this time. Thank you guys. Right, I'll move on now. So hopefully other people's um, benefits for their products, which they put up here, give you some inspiration for yours as well. So you can um, learn from each other as much from the exercise itself. Per professional brand, and that is a nice one, knowledge. Yeah, so there's a lot here about um, what I'm hearing is we 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 know that it's mostly about B2B um, from the previous session. So from this mentee, we can see there's an awful lot about quality of service, um, professional branding, um, expertise, knowledge. To me, that all speaks to um, more like professional services as a B2B service. Um, so I'm just sort of guessing, joining the dots there, but that's that's kind of what I'm hearing at the moment. Thanks a lot for your contributions. That's really good. So here, um, what are your product's features? Well, finally, we can start talking about our product features. So how do these pre features provide the benefits which solve our customers' pains? What are the advantages of our product's features, which are unique to us? And how are they protected? What is their value to our customers? 
So we want to try and you know, differentiate ourselves from our competition. We want to try and be as unique as possible. Unique is you're either unique or you're not really. But in reality, you can think you're unique and then you find a competitor who's doing something similar. So differentiating your offer and your brand is, is really important here. So explaining the advantages to the customer which deliver those benefits and hopefully unique advantages to your, your business uh, is, is really important. So here are some, some more themes. Um, so how will your advantages deliver benefits to your customers? Um, so here's some examples to get you started. What makes your product better than your competitors? And how do these advantages provide valuable benefits to your consumers? So I've probably made a mistake here saying consumers and businesses, because actually many businesses think in a very personal way, especially when they're choosing services. So we'll think more like a consumer. They'll think more about the personal relationship um, with that, that other business person that they're buying the service from. And they will also think a lot about how that professional service might make them feel within their own job. Um, when you're buying in a service from outside, then obviously it reflects on you individually. So it is a personal decision, even if you're buying for a business in the B2B sort of business model. So it's worth thinking about how the, the personal and the commercial aspects are both relevant, whether you're selling consumer product or a B2B product. So now I'd like to ask you to um, think about your product advantages. So not just the features, but what is unique to you? What, what advantage do you have over your competition? And if you could share those on here and, and, and try and focus on the things that you do better than everybody else. Time for another drink. Mm. One stop shop. That's an all in one service, I guess. Durability. So it, it's a, a longer lasting solution. Sounds like a physical product, maybe. Specialism. So niche services, know your market, do that one thing really well. Efficiency. That's coming back. I'm wondering what that is, what sort of product that is. Um, security, so that might be IT security, I guess, or it could be um, financial security. Specialism is getting bigger. I, I, I'm wondering here if there's uh, a lot of uh, B2B services which are quite specialist. Knowledge again. Experience. So is your, you're offering a unique experience to your customers. So it's sort of like a benefit and an advantage. But we're trying to think about things here that we do better than everybody else. Culturally forward relevant. Holistic view service. That's another kind of, yeah, a broad, a service which allows a broader picture of, of the customer's business perhaps. Visibility. So is that about offering your con con your customers greater visibility within their own market? I wonder, efficiency is big again. Mm, quality, there we go. Thank you very much for these, um, these responses. That's really interesting. Um, I think the culturally uh, relevant one is, is something <laughs> I'd like to know more about. Um, we've got 13 responses again. This is about the same as last time. I'll I'll move on now. That's okay. Right. So here are my takeaways. So we've talked about understanding the pains which our customers' problems cause them. I'm trying to focus on the pains rather than just the problems themselves. It's the experience, not just the, the abstract problem. And we've discussed how to provide benefits which solve these pains. And we've highlighted the advantages of our products, which enable these benefits. So let's try writing a sentence to describe how we solve our customers' pains by providing benefits through our product advantages. This is the essence of how to pitch our products. So I'm not going to ask for this in a mentee, but something perhaps a little bit of homework is, you know what you put in the previous three mentees. So if you join those up in a sentence and try and make something that looks a bit like this, so here I've written, we reduce our customers' pains by providing benefits enabled by our product's advantages. So 
from my point of view, and you know, when I'm helping people to improve their pitch, um, I'm trying to um, you know, increase their confidence and and make them stand out more by um, uh, remo removing the kind of you know the me too aspect and making their their proposition to investor or customer more unique um, and focusing on how it benefits the customer um, instead of just you know solving an abstract problem. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And just to finish off, I'd like to say thank you very much. This has been a quick one, um, slightly quicker than I expected, but I want to make sure I finish on time. Uh, if you'd like to connect um, and, and message me on LinkedIn, um, you can use that barcode on the left if it will work. It's got a thing in front of it. Um, and I've got a website as well, which uh, talks a bit more. I offer quite a wide range of services, but I, I do spend a lot of time doing um, pitching and of various sorts. So um, if you're interested in knowing more about pitch decks for raising investment, that's something I spend a lot of time on with, with many clients. Um, if you'd like to know more about this or anything else that you, you notice on my profile or website, do let me know. And I think Owen is probably going to appear again. And uh, thank everybody. I can see a lot going on in the chat. Right. Um, thank you very much. That was really interactive. That was a bit different for a lunch and I loved it. Um, great. Well, we haven't as of yet got any questions in the chat. However, I will say to our attendees, um, if you've got any questions, please do post them in the chat and we'll use this space now. Oh, we've got one here from Simona. Uh, is it possible to get the website link for those unable to capture the QR code? Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Fab. Um, Stephen, question then, if you if you don't mind, what can the people in the room expect to um, get if they reach out to you for support with their business? I offer quite a range of services, to be honest. Um, pitching and particularly pitch decks for raising investment is a, is a very common thing I get asked about. Um, so, I, and there's a lot more, of course, to pitch decks than I've covered here because this is. This really is about the kind of the first three slides of most standard pitch decks um, when you're raising investment. So the problem, the solution, the product features, how it works. Um, but the rest of it in terms of explaining the market, um, the competitors and the rest of it, that's a lot of the stuff I do as well. Um, and then in, in other areas, I do get involved in, in helping technical founders, you know, make a commercial presentation of what they've invented and try and find a good market for it. And I also help some commercial founders um, understand more about um, the technical possibilities to make their product. So I do both sides. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, well, there's a link in the chat there to connect with Steve. So anyone in the room, please do that. Um, Steve, if I could get you just to share the link um, for Simona there for those QR codes. Um, to be fair, the LinkedIn one, don't worry about that, because if um, anyone in the room that wants to click through, if you click through to the link that I've shared, um, I believe that there is a link to it Stephen's LinkedIn up. profile, so you can just click through there. But if we can get that link to the website. Yeah, let me just give me a second to... Um, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, please send your questions if you've got. So did you enjoy this? Was it useful? Um What would you like to see more of or less of in the future? <laughs> How are we getting on with that link? Hang on. It's the usual thing where you type it in, and I think I've got it right, but basically the um, Google will go, oh, no, you want to search for this thing, not, not um, find that website. I don't pay Google enough money, obviously. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. And we have got one question whilst you've been looking for that link. So you Doreen, like I said, what tips do you have in case you're pitching to a client? Many others are pitching to to stand out further. Great question. Try and figure out who else is doing the pitching. And one way to do that is to look on LinkedIn and see who their connections are. Because once you're connected to your customer, you can see who else they're connected to. And you drill down and you say, oh, look, my competitor salesman is also connected to him. So which and, and is, is that salesperson in charge of a particular product? If so, what is that product and how does it compare with mine? So then you get into sort of competitor comparison matrices, which is a perhaps another lunch and learn one day. Um, 
but you know you need to look at your product versus all the competitors products which you think might be pitched against yours and go through to be honest with yourself about how you stand out it's raised to believe your own sales pitch quite often so listen to your competitor sales pitch try and see if they've done anything on youtube or other videos read their product literature compare it honestly against yours try and look at all it's, it's like a top trump sort of game as to what they do that you don't do and how do you message against that so there's a whole kind of i'm not going to get into kind of sales training because i'm not really that expert but there's a whole kind of science about how you do objection handling and how you make sure that if if your customer sat there and says well i've just heard this great pitch from your competitor and it sounds marvelous then you've got an answer for that so if you can try and figure out what the objections might be because the things that look better in their literature compared to yours, then you've got an answer for that. So prepare those answers in advance, prepare your objection handling, get it ready before you walk in. Beautifully life. said, thank you very much. Well, um, I think that leads us nicely to conclude this presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you to our attendees watching. As I said at the start, this has been recorded and you can expect a follow up email later on with a copy of the recording and further resources. But for now, all that's left for me to say is thank you for attending. Thank you, Stephen, and uh, to everyone for the rest of the day. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.